Get the funky controller that needs to be repaired at some point. I need to buy the parts is what actually needs to happen. Uh, let me get the order out. So we're back. And we're gonna start immediately with Soji Okta because he was next on the list. There's our boy. Alright, let's go. Chapter 1. <sighs> Low romance and high corruption is your recipe. It's my duty to watch after you. Well, it's my duty to watch after you. I want to make sure you're being cared for. まじめなんだね。ま、それならそれでいいけど。君、僕の看病に構けてほとんど寝てないんじゃない？ああ、that's uh, not true. I'm resting well. Antoni? Of course. I mean, I was thinking of a convincing explanation when. Thanks, Yamazaki. There was a poll about who was suffering the most during this whole ordeal right here on Tumblr, and it's like. Soji, Okta, Yamazaki, or Matsumoto. I think Yamazaki's the one that's suffering the most because he has to make sure that uh, 
Okta and Cheezer don't exert themselves. Also have to make sure everything is alright. And he can't actually do his duties because he's looking after these two dumbasses. And also this. I also have to deal with Kaoru. I forgot about that part. <laughs> There we go. Unfortunately, uh, hold on. Huh? Uh -oh. Um. Do that. Oh, God. Oh, God. Right. Uh, are we? Are we back? Uh, are we back? Are we fine? Are we streaming? Are we streaming? <laughs> Please, if you're in chat, tell me we're okay now. I can't tell. I am going to assume connection is stable. <laughs> if you were kicked out, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Internet decided to go on and fuck up. We're fine. We're fine now. Thank God I was also recording at the same time, or else this would be gold for nothing. Um. Well, we make him endure it. Unfortunately, we have to do that to Soji. But we did it with everybody else, so... <laughs> Oops. Actually. Ooh. Wait. I can screen cap shit! Anyway. It was hard to watch him suffer, but... You're really going to be okay? I was worried. Hey, Okita. For now, though, all I could do was hope. I stroked his back, desperately wishing that he would feel better. But. Okita! He didn't hear me, though. The pain had grown so intense that he had simply passed out. Whoa! Okita! Hang in there! Okita! Okita did actually regain consciousness the following day, but... I wondered if I did the right thing by letting him just suffer like that. Was there anything else I could have done for him? These thoughts consumed me all day, and it was nearly impossible to get over them. My voice cracked. Wonderful. It's what I needed. Wait, I'm not skipping that? Okita's injuries have finally recovered. Are you sure about that game? Yamazaki have visited with a portmanteau. Okay, now we can do that. Never mind. Um, how should I answer? I can barely recognize you. 
I almost barely recognized you. Huh. Ah, uh, uh, sorry. I didn't mean anything by it. まあ、別にいいけど。君って余計なことに気を回す割には肝心なところが鈍いよね。うん、now that I think about it, you removed your top knot. Okita instinctively patted the spot where his top knot used to be, which seemed to sadden him. Kondo-san と同じ形にしてたんだけどね。大事なのは形じゃなくて。Okita looked quite handsome in it with his fresh new haircut and his new form-fitting western uniform. Skip button. Alright, so where does everything start? I'm going to coffee! Suddenly, Okita kicked the ground angrily, charging for Kaoru with the intent to kill him. A metallic howl echoed in the mountain pass behind me as her blades clashed against one another. Okita was regarded as the most talented swordsman in the Shinsengumi. However, Kaoru seemed to have no trouble avoiding Okita's flailing strikes, dodging each one effortlessly. Before long, Okita had enough. <laughs> The color of Okita's hair began to leave it, and his irises became a hue of crimson. <coughs> Compared to earlier, Okita moved purposefully and fluently, adding an elegant flair to his technique that pushed Kaoru to it with his back against the wall. A series of well-aimed strokes landed on Kaoru's abdomen, and blood flowed freely from the freshly split, split flesh wounds. <laughs> Okta grimaced as the blood splashed in droplets on his porcelain face. Okta! Kuna! He barked at me intensely, stopping me in my tracks. <laughs> His irises flickered a shade of red, as if he were caught in a limbo between sanity and insanity. Oh no. Nanda,せっかく俺が教えてあげたって言うのに、血を飲ませなかったんだ。俺の妹は意外と白状なんだね。かわいそうな大きさ。I was overcome with guilt. <laughs> Okita's body was convulsing before my eyes, and I could only watch him helplessly. Then... His eyes glowed red, and behind them contained a madness impatiently waiting to burst. Okita! As I called out to him, I saw his eyes waver ever so slightly, as if he were fighting to retain his humanity. But it was too late. <laughs> Something cold pierced through my chest. I peeked down slowly, watching the blade twist through my beating heart. <laughs> I caught a glimpse of Okita's eyes once more, watching what remained of Okita be consumed by the madness. Uh, 
by the madness. I was realizing that the man I once knew was now a shadow of his former self. Did I make a mistake? Okay. I mustered what little strength remained in me to force myself to say in saying Okita's name once more. He then turned to look at me, giving the faintest shape of a smile, and he raised his sword once more. Then, my consciousness ceased. Alright! I... I suppose that's something. Okta and Saito have in common. Oh boy. Losing themselves to the man. So Okita, Okita just looked like himself, so that's even more scary. All right, records of service, Okita, chapter two. Low romance and high corruption is your recipe. Can I hit the skip button already? Do, 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 do. Make him endure it, unfortunately. Okita, oh, hang in there! He looked close to collapsing. I quickly got to my knees behind him and unwrapped his chest with my arms. It became difficult for Okita to draw breath as the pain stretched through every inch of his body. What could I possibly do for him? I was helpless beside him. Mal content to wait idly by as I watch him scream bloody murder. <laughs> I flinched from the howling bellow of his screams. <laughs> if I had only given my blood, then he likely wouldn't have been in as much agony as he was. <laughs> He screamed through panted breaths. Okita! I felt as if someone was squeezing my lungs. I hugged his body close to me in a desperate fit. It was all I could do. On this particular night, Okita's episode lasted well until sunrise. As soon as his seizure began to ease, Okita had passed out from exhaustion. I wondered to myself how much more pain he would have to endure from here. Isn't there anything else I could do? Hi, Okita. Oh no, we get the flashback. Oh.
What should I tell him? I don't want you to go. I understand where you're coming from, Okita, but to be honest with you, I don't want you to go. So Okita said no, no more. It seemed that no matter what I could have said to him, his heart was set on going. <sighs> However, if you plan on setting out to find Kondo-san, please take me with you. My words took Okita by surprise, and his eyes widened at my suggestion. I owe Kondo-san so much for showing me kindness under his watch. And aside from that, I can't leave you alone. Button! Oh, hi, Ijikata! I forgot you come to visit us. I... Uh, what the sh... What was it that he said before? Master Grudge, if you're still around, who knows what the hell they'll do to you? Alright, so basically, we should probably get out of here! Maybe, possibly. Okay, thank you. それじゃあ、俺はもう行く。掃除のやつによろしくな。待て! Let me walk you out! I rushed to follow Hijikata-san, who I had already turned around to head- who had already turned around to head for the door. Where do we go from here? No. <sighs> Oh, damn it, Soji. Can you just fucking rest properly? Well, now we escape. Oh. I forget. Okay. I'm gonna rectify this. In Haruka's root. I'm sorry. I'm gonna rectify this. Because I think Kazuma should have been the problem in Okita's root. And not Kaudu. I'm sorry. I have to say that. Okita was being pushed to his absolute limit. <laughs> Suddenly, Okita halted his movement, letting out a heavy groan. <laughs> Okita? I noticed his wide shoulder frame begin to convulse violently. Oh no. Cosmo's blade shined under the moonlight. M Mate! Please, don't kill Okita! Even still, I beg of you! Whether or not Okita could safely retain his sanity was the least of my worries. Please! If Okita dies, I cannot bear to live another day. Kazuma was indifferent to my desperate pleas, and he puffed air from his lips as he stared down at me. Just then... <coughs> Okita's cry was so disturbingly harsh that it was hard to believe it was human. My heart shattered. I don't think I've ever heard uh, him scream like that ever. I was incredulous to think that Okita could be bested into one thing into which he had dedicated his entire life. I could only helplessly cover my eyes, but at the same time I couldn't peel my eyes off of him. After watching Cosmo's murderous display, I only saw the gleam of his blood-red eyes peeking through the darkness. Oh. 
I barely had any chance to move out of the way. A blade gleamed ominously in the light of the moon, and it flashed blight blindingly before my eyes. I'm sorry, Okta. I wish I could have saved you. Right, that was real short. All right, how many times are we gonna die by Okita's hands? Please answer me this game. You got one more game over. Low romance and high corruption is your recipe. I'm just drinking my water. killing machine because he's the sword of the Shinsengumi. Oh, so Yamazaki saved our ass. And I'm sad because this is the last we see of him. I could muster, and my voice cracked raspily as the words came out. <sighs> Okita's swordsmanship was unparalleled, and I knew that few could come close to beating him in combat. But possessing a mastery of swordsmanship was not a guarantee of victory on the battlefield. To top it off, Okita's illness made him much, much weaker than he was at his physical peak. Regardless of the outcome of their battle, there was no way Okita could die. At least, his smile seemed to promise me as much. Despite holding my grave concerns close to my heart, I could only nod kindly in return. Between us, there was a brief moment of silence. <laughs> Suddenly, Okita had crumpled to the ground, and then... <laughs> his hair turned white and his eyes turned red. Okita! He... was... was he having another seizure? No, oh, no, to make matters worse... He seemed to be suffering in more agony than any of his previous episodes. I... made him endure it! I hugged him tightly as he fought against the pain. Okta! <laughs> it became harder for Okta to speak, and neither of us knew when his seizure nor his unbearable pain would cease. How much longer would Okita need to withstand this needless suffering? Okita had a high tolerance for pain, but... A day would come where he would no longer be able to handle this on his own. My heart swore restlessly in my anxiety. After Okita's painful seizure had died down, we tried leaving again for Utsunomiya Castle, but...
We had remained behind the bush, peeking to make sure there were no more troops nearby, but... Okita suddenly let out a pained outburst. <gasps> the seizure had only just subsided, but now... O Okita, please try to muffle yourself. If the enemy were to find us... <laughs> oh, this is bad. Okita gritted his teeth bitterly, trying his best to suppress himself from screaming out, but... <laughs> A nearby Imperial soldier had overheard us, and I froze in fear. Despite our best efforts, we couldn't hide for long. Oh no, we've been found. We're done for. Just as I contemplated the worst case scenario. <laughs> Okita's roar howled like a wild beast, and behind his eyes was a burning ire. And then, he leapt from the bushes, startling the soldiers who had scant a chance to ready themselves. The soldier reached for his rifle, but he was too slow for the incoming Okita. Okita slashed at his throat, and the soldier gurgled blood before his fingers even touched the trigger. To Okita, however, this was only the beginning. Okita viciously stabbed the soldier, who struggled to find air, over and over again, each strike working itself into his abdomen like a pin to a cushion. <laughs> The other soldier watched helplessly, trembling as he raised his rifle to fire at Okita, but it was no use. <laughs> Okita hardly flinched as he as each bullet pierced his flesh, and he laughed maniacally in response, Holy shit! The soldier shook with fear for his life. Okita dashed swiftly behind him, slicing him from beh slicing him from behind. As Okita's murderous cackle echoed around the hill, other soldiers arrived to avenge their men. In the blink of an eye, Okita th wove through the troop, dismembering each soldier with gusto. <laughs> He was covered head to toe in blood, drunk in his sadistic stupor as he drove his sword mercilessly into the fresh corpses, even if they were no longer moving. It was a cruel and humane display to witness for myself. Okta! I could no longer bear to watch him kill someone tonly, so I, watched, I rushed over to him. I no longer saw the man I knew as Okita behind those red eyes of his. He had gone mad. I was convinced he would try and attack me, but... When I got into his line of sight, he stopped moving, gazing silently at me with his blood-red eyes. Please, come back to me. Okita, you still have so much to do, remember? He sneered dubiously, and a drop of blood slid down his cheek that went unnoticed to him. And then... He spoke my name clearly. Hokuta! Is it you? Is it really you? Just as I called out to him, I heard an Imperial soldier shriek behind me. Then, suddenly... Wow! Marco Sharko. Yay, you followed me! Hello, welcome to the stage. Enjoy your stay. Uh, 
as we get shot. I'm assuming. A loud bang rang from his rifle. Suddenly, my vision became blurry. <sighs> I struggled to hold onto my vision, and I felt my body give, give way as I fell to the ground. What? What just happened? My hands were on the dirt, and I couldn't bring myself to stand. I... I had no strength in me. Chizuru-chan! Shikari shite! Okita screamed from right behind, beside me, but... Everything was slowly enveloping in darkness, and I could no longer make out Okita's face, even though it was only inches in front of me. I'm so sorry, Okita. I guess this means I can't be by your side after all. to the bad end where I have to figure out where this word I'm missing is for the encyclopedia. That's gonna be fun. Alright. We're gonna go through this slowly so I'm not hitting the skip button. The bad ending is... Excuse me? Hi, romance! Low corruption. Is that what? Huh? Alright. I'm trusting you, guide. Let's go. That's your recipe for this bad ending. I'm not skipping. I'm pushing the skip button. I gotta look for a word. Uh, where is... So I know what the word is. I'd say color disturbance is what I'm looking for, and it's in chapter four, so, um. Chizuru! Right. Chizuru! We're going to hear the cutout voices. I'm sorry, I can't go faster. I think my button mashing just fucked my A button. <laughs> it is no longer a sturdy button like the other buttons on my controller. <laughs> Can we find the word? Where could this word be? Hi, Kaoru. I, I stop getting closer to me. Kaoru would be really fun to voice, but I don't want to right now. Come on. Where is my missing word? これ<笑><笑> I gotta act this out again. I just wanna do that. I, I wanna. <laughs> Another dizzy spell pulsed in my head. It became difficult to see clearly. My heartbeat had one ferocious pound and then. <laughs> Suddenly, I craved blood. I... I craved Okita's blood. My cravings began to dominate my mind, as if my entire body screamed to tear Okita limb from limb. 
See, drinking the water of life is not the best thing you could do. Unfortunately, we were forced to drink it the last time. It was an animalistic desire that became impossible to resist with each passing moment. The thirst came from within. It was innate, and it needed to be quenched immediately. <sighs> <laughs> My forehead burned unbearably all of a sudden. I instinctively reached to touch it when my fingers felt something firm. Oh no, what was this? My hair, which was tied into a bun atop my head, became undone and fell to my shoulders. From the corner of my eye, I saw my hair flicker. It... it turned white. No! No! I shook violently from fear. As I reached to touch my forehead once more, I felt two horns begin to poke through the flesh, slowly in inching themselves above the surface. No! Am I really a demon? Was this because of the water of life? White hair and horns stabbing through my forehead? My soul, my body, both were becoming corrupted by the serum's poisonous effects. <laughs> the pain was un abruptly punch punctuated by a desperate thirst. A tickling sensation began to irritate every inch of my skin, making me want to scratch uncontrollably. No! Oh! Then a hand gently grabbed a hold of my shoulders. I was too embarrassed to let, to let Okita see me like this, and I couldn't bear to turn and face him. Don't. <laughs> Look at me. Okita was silent. Please. <laughs> Don't look at me! After I let out my sheepish whimper, he responded with a calm demeanor. No! I can't! All I could do was shake my head, fighting helplessly to suppress my cravings. He grabbed both of my arms and forced me to face back at him. There he was. In front of me stood a demon who resembled what I was slowly transforming into. However, he had no horns on his head. But just like me, his hair turned white and he looked ravenous for the taste of blood. I... I wasn't alone. The knowledge of this overwhelmed me. I wasn't alone. Okita breathed in a strained, panting staccato. Okita, I... I well, since we haven't picked it and it's the actual correct answer. I want... Blood. I need your blood, Okita. I didn't know how much longer I could tolerate the pain of my cravings. So, Wakata. Are we getting the reverse? Oh, for the love of God, please tell me this has a CG. Okita smiled warmly, unsheathing his wakizashi from its short scabbard. Then he swiftly set the edge of the tiny blade across his left thumb before offering me a taste. I watched a drop of blood race down the length of his thumb in slow motion as it gradually increased in size and thickness before dropping to the ground. <laughs> the scent of the blood stung my nostrils, wafting towards me with growing intensity. <laughs> I wordlessly lunged forward, intimately wrapping my lips around his bloody appendage. Did we have to use appendage? 
That is just the weirdest fucking word to say. Just say thumb. That's the first. Luscious, luscious drop landed on my tongue. The pain disappeared, and in its place, a languid calm. I became entranced by its saccharine, saturn taste. With each determined sip, I fell deeper and deeper into this stupor, and I was so close to Okita. Was this how he, ah, a button? Was this how he felt when he drank my blood? All this time when he licked and slurped so eagerly from my flesh, was he too captivated by his taste? Okita, you too. As I reluctantly, reluctantly, as I reluctantly moved my lips from his thumb, I drew him in closer and whispered coolly into his ear. His eyes thin and he held his wakizashi again. This time, he stood at the freshly used sword against the length of my cartered, cart, cartered artery among, along my neck. Blah, blah. I shut my eyes tightly. At first, I went as he broke the skin, and then I felt the touch of its warm, succulent lips. Can I skip this now? No, I can't. Feeling the slight pinch of his favorite sucking filled me with a wholesome comfort. I felt relief. getting that. Two. Why is this the only time we get to see Chizuru in her actual form? I is mad. <laughs> I am somewhat mad. I am somewhat mad. Our lips were stained red, lost in the passionate throes of our bloodthirsty cravings as we took turns gulping mouthfuls of each other's juices. Did we have to use juices? It was inhuman display unlike anything I'd ever believed myself capable of. And yet, despite how we may have looked, it was sublime, and I basked in glee. If I had to endure this experience alone, I think the idea of such a display would paralyze me into inaction. But I wasn't alone. Okita, too, had submitted to this carnal impulse. And together we engorged on, into each other's body. I didn't care if my mind would descend into madness from the effects of the serum. I fell captive to the taste of Okita's metallic blood, and I found myself becoming enchanted by its alluring aroma. Oh! I just noticed her ears are pointed. I guess when the de you're a demon, your ears become... Pointed? I've noticed this on Sen. I haven't noticed this on Cosma, actually, to be fair. I should probably look at it the next time we see Cosma. Actually, I don't think we will, actually. <laughs> I didn't expect it. I didn't expect that. Game! Game! Do we skip? Yeah, book we skip. I yell at this game 24-7 because it does things. Also the kiss! The tea! Be everything that we're all waiting for. I said, say nothing and accept him. Yep, that's exactly what I'm doing. It's fine. I mustered whatever courage I could to answer hastily. Uh, um, so, 
if you don't wish to do so, Okta. His tone was beginning to edge on the side of mockery, and I couldn't hold it in for much longer. This is why I think you're mean, Okita. Akita reached his hand out to grab a hold of me by the wrist. Okay, so that's all the same. Oh, so... Okita is a special boy. That gets two kisses! Anyway. So what? Da -da -da. I haven't seen any pink text that tells me I'm missing a word yet. Where the fuck is this word? せっかくの機会だ。行動自身が完成させたらせつの力を見せてやろうか。しかし、大きただけ狙わせればいいだろう。それくらいの初期は保ってるんだよね。Father stared off in contemplation, but eventually he put two fingers in his mouth, whistled loudly as if to signal a nearby individual. Can we actually have a natural whistle and not a snap, please? And then an eerie sight came to our attention. <laughs> Before we knew it, dozens of red eyes shined through the darkness. That all those eyes belonged to furies? It wasn't just ten, nor even twenty of them. Father, Coda! Just how many people have you sacrificed for your experiments with the water of life? We got a genius over here. All encyclopedia. I, I, I did it. Is it just. Did I just need to look at them? Huh? Well, I got that achievement out of the way, I guess. During the Ansai. Ansai. Ansai era, a, vic a vicious strain of cholera swept through Japan, killing thousands. Kaura acted so coolly, which only set off my anger. No matter how many injustices were committed against Kaura, it was no excuse for the atrocities both he and father were committing. なせつかしたって言ってもさ。誰もが僕たちみたいに強くなれるわけじゃないよね。剣の心得がろくにない人間に落ち水を飲ませたところで弱い人間は弱いままだ。それなのに。こんなに数ばっかり増やしちゃって
sprinted towards him like moths to a flame, perhaps attracted by the shine of his sword. Okuta wasted no breath, using one concise slash to subdue the first wave of incoming furies. I had noticed, however, that these furies were far stronger than anything I saw in with the Shinsengumi. This seemed to be a non-issue for Okita, who cut limb from limb in each fury with gusto. Ah! Freaking A button. Anyway, he said. This was no simple boast. What Okita, what Okita said was true. Well, the Fury started around him in the hopes of getting the better of his defenses to find an opening. Okita was twice as, qu as quick, killing each with aplomb. At this rate, I would not have been surprised to see Kaoru and Father's goal undone in minutes. In the back of my mind, I was still worried. Okita was a fury, and as the blood of his enemies drenched him like a torrential tor 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 storm, I knew it was only a matter of time before his cravings would strike. No sooner than when the thought entered my head, <coughs> Okita suddenly halted in place. Okita. Anxiously, I called out to him. <laughs> the gurgling scream of a nearby fury was soon followed by a visceral splatter of fresh blood. The sally was not enough. Okita began stabbing the fresh corpses that littered the ground around his feet. Ah, so we're going this route. The foul metallic scent of blood became thick. Oh no. No! Okita was growing mad with bloodless. No, this can't be happening. But. Okita! I screamed his name, and he slowly turned his head around to glance back at me. However, I saw no hint of sanity within his dilated eyes. He was drunk from the scent of blood. I was shaking violently, and out of nervousness, I ran towards Okita. From behind me, I could hear Father calling out my name. I grabbed at Okita's sleeves once I reached him. Okta! Refusing to believe that he was lost in bloodlust, I repeated his name, hoping he would come too. Then... He muttered my name from under his breath. Oh, I was so elated to hear it. Underneath this madness, he was still the same Okta. Or was he? Something cold and sharp was forced through my chest. Father's voice echoed behind me. Everything went quiet, except for the burning sensation in my chest and the pound of my heart. Eventually, the blade in my chest came into focus just seconds before it was yanked out. Feeling began to leave my legs, and before I knew it, I collapsed to the floor. I attempted to stand, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't move my arms or my legs, nor could I rise. Although I'd expected the temperate summer winds to breeze by, I was suddenly shivering from cold. Just then, a shaky voice echoed above where I was lying. It was Okita, whose eyes were no longer stained with red stained red with madness. 
While initially I took comfort from this thought, I still had a sense of dread in me. Because... Not only would I no longer be able to remain beside Okita, I knew that he would regret having put his blade through my chest. Ow! My heart! Those were the last words I heard from him. Jesus! Die, 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 die. That hurts. Oh, that hurts. All right, time for our last one for Okita the unrequited love ending. I'm going to shut the floor again. Low romance and low corruption is your recipe. And since we don't have to look for the word anymore, I can skip. When it lets me skip. There we go. Get there. The answer is I'll endure it. Since we've had this answer before, we'll keep going until it stops us. Is our kiss again? Just then, my father's voice interrupted the tension. His uninvited chatter was an effort, perhaps, to keep us from drawing our swords quickly. <laughs> no amount of convincing myself could adequately prepare me. Prepare me to accept that possibility. Father, it pained me to watch my father, the man who raised me, assign such a fate to me. But still, I could only shake my head. I can't. I nodded. Crowder was right. It was unlikely for us to see eye to eye about this. I had no plans to relent. 
おじさんももう諦めなよこいつらは俺たちの仲間にはならない仲間じゃないってことは敵ってことだこいつらを生かしておく理由もないさししかし My father, rather surprisingly, seemed hesitant to agree with Kaoru's act of condemnation. I was sure that he was still clinging to the hope that his daughter would never become his enemy. He would always be father to me, but why had he changed so drastically? Father, I've made up my mind. Shizuru. He stared back at me with a twinkle of hope. Demo, <laughs> sir. 妹の目を覚まさせる手がないってわけじゃないよ。カオル君。ファーザーディビスリーフォーディスブラウス。With that カオル and she the sword。妹をたぶらかす悪い男を殺してやれば。もしかしたら目を覚ますかもね。カオル。カオル pointed the tip of his blade straight at Okita。シズル。お前は。その男に何を吹き込まれたんだ No, father, it's not like that! お前の思い人を目の前で殺すのは気が進まんが Father closed his eyes In the next moment I became paralyzed with fear at the terrifying display that was happening to father. His eyes radiated gold, and from his forehead grew a massive horn splitting the surface of his skin. Father, that's. Aoru kun ni kika na katta no kai? Junkets no oni dewa nai kono watashi mo. Aiyo shita ochi mizu sae nomeba. Oni honlai no chikara o tori modo seru no da yo. No, you drank the water of life? Sono tori da. Kono xri sai areba. Arebare wa yase ichizok ya kazama ichizok wa mo shinogu. Arata na oni no meishi to nareru no da yo. I couldn't stop shaking. My power was drunk with the. What? My power was drunk with the power of the fury. He had no regrets. Perhaps he didn't even give it a second thought about corrupting humans into these monsters. He was seduced by the potential for glory. My father, the kind hearted man that I used to love, was no more. Okata placed his hand gently on top of my shoulder. <laughs> Okita. After winking wryly, Okita drew his sword, and then in the blink of an eye, his hair transformed white. Shitotsu聞いてもいいかな。コードさんは行方をくらませた後も、ずっとおちみつの研究を続けてたんだよね。おちみつの毒を消す方法は見つかったの。それとも。As father began to answer, Kaoru chimed in. Kari ni mitsukatta to shitemo, ore tachi ga sunao ni kotaeru to omou ka? Dou shitemo shiritai in nara, chikara zuku de iuasete goran. So, wakatta. Sore jya soro soro hajime yo ka. Chizuru-chan, sagatte te. Okata spoke curtly, and I tepidly distanced myself. Then, suddenly, one of them, no, it must have been both of them, their feet thunderously kicked from the ground, cracking the dirt beneath them as they lunged. The metallic clang of clash of their blades echoed like a banshee as the space around them filled with sparks. As if Okata weren't preoccupied enough, my father gripped a handful of scalpels, throwing each one angrily at Okita like a kunai blade. 
Okita instantly swiped them out of harm's way with a swing of his sword. Kaoru! Kaoru fought desperately to find an opening in Okita's defense, but Okita parried each of his strikes easily. Their swords hammered deafeningly with each clash. Okita smirked brightly, despite fending off two demons. To top it off, Kaoru, whose pedigree was similar to Kazuma's as a pure-blooded demon, failed to gain the upper hand on Okita, despite his best efforts. うん。ごめん、ごめん。なんだかんだ言っても彼女の育ての the air surrounding Okata and Kaoru suddenly became thick with tension, and watching from the sidelines, I couldn't think of interfering if I wanted to. They continued to trade blows ferociously. Their blades were now starting to meet flesh, each strike preceding a painful splurt of blood. As the scent of blood became stronger, so too did Okita's thirst, and his breather became rugged. Could, could he continue fighting in these conditions? Could Okita triumph over both father and Kaoru? I had, I had to keep telling myself to keep my faith. But no matter what, anxious thoughts crept in. His words were bl so blithe that I was sure they could have just as easily been directed at me. I think he was preparing me. Preparing me to accept the death of both my father and my brother. Was I truly ready to see them die? I silently nodded. Although I did not confirm aloud, I had a feeling that Okita would understand. The next strike would determine everything. Another handful of scalpels came flying towards Okita from father. Kaoru took advantage of the timing of this distraction by leaping forward with his sword, but... His charge was not aimed for Okita. It was aimed for me. <gasps> Suddenly, a white blade appeared before my eyes. <laughs> I had scarcely any time to avoid his sword. Okuta cried out desperately from behind Kaoru, the latter of whom grinned dementedly. After deflecting an incoming scalpel, Okuta kicked against the ground. He fervently rushed to meet Kaoru's advance. Kaoru, however, already had his sword right above me. A gleam sparkled ominously from the white blade, and I clenched and anticipated of it meeting my shoulder. My head shook intensely as the blade split the surface. Blood splattered onto my forehead and eyelids. I could only see Kaoru through the bloody haze. But by a stroke of luck, the wound hit no vital points, and my flesh would hopefully heal soon. Kaoru flipped his sword, pointed the blood-stained tip at Okita once more. Okita! Okita assumed a defensive stance. I saw both his and Kaoru's shadow cross one another. However, 
While I had anticipated another roaring clang of swords meeting, what I heard was the sound of flesh being torn asunder. <coughs> Kaoru struggled to keep his footing, gasping for air. Then he collapsed to his knees and suppressed the instinct to cry out madly in pain. Kaoru suddenly stopped shaking, becoming as still as water before flashing a smile. Okita! Okita! I ran towards Okita, rushing to support his upper body, which had which was stained red. Not even the pain in my shoulder, which only moments before was searing, could stop me. Oh! Okta, please hang in there! Bava shone the distant light of the moon, which had made brilliant the scattered pools of blood. Even at a time like this, Okita showed more concern for me than for himself. I felt so pitiable that I could have cried. Believe me, I'm fine. This pain is nothing. This kind of gash will heal itself right away. Okta looked pale as snow, but he forced a timid smile. From his chest trickled a thick, steady stream of crimson blood. I had to assume if his heart were to stop beating, that would mean the end for the two of us. Suddenly his lips moved. He reached his bloodstained fingers to my cheek. Oh! I love you. Okita. I love you more than anyone in this entire world. If Okita wished it were so, I would say to him a hundred times, until my lungs could no longer draw breath to give those words fi flight. Tears began streaming from my eyes, flowing so heavily that it was difficult to see Okita through them. His shaking fingers meekly wiped some of my tears, but they did little to stop the rest as my cheeks burned hotly beneath puffy eyelids. I watched a soul drop land on his cheek. Why? The only thing that could numb the pain in my shoulder was the anguishing kill was the anguish killing me inside. Accepting the turn of events in front of me proved to be an excruciating endeavor. 
It all hurts far too much. It was maddening. Why would you say such a thing? The warmth slowly started leaving Okita's body. He glanced down, holding my hand gingerly. Then he looked into my eyes, and our lips met. The fingers that had been stroking my cheeks stopped suddenly, as if they had no strength to continue. Okita's words tipped heavily from his mouth. His sincerity was so sweet, but each passing minute brought me closer and closer to having to accept that he was what was to come. Me too. I, I don't want you to be taken from me. This was far from the end for which I had hoped. Okita's eyes were looking directly at me. I had noticed they weren't focusing at all. His lips, his lips shivered helplessly, struggling to find form. These words were his last. Okita. I fearfully called his name, only to hear no answer. He would no longer say my name. He would no longer wipe away my tears. Not a single glimmer of light would ever emerge from those precious pools of green in his eyes. Okita, answer me! Onegai! I yearn for all of this to be a joke. To hear Okita snap back from this and utter my name once more. All I could do was hold his lifeless body in my arms. Okita! Okita made me realize that there would come a day where our time spent together would end. I had just hoped that such a day would be far into the future. That we could delay our farewell indefinitely. I wish. I wish I never knew how painful a farewell could be. Man, the guide person was right! Someone is mercilessly cutting tons of onions! Soulless eyes. When his eyes became soulless. Holy. My God. Oh. Oh. And I'm sorry if that last scream peaked. One, I was getting very into it. Two, I had to at least scream his name once at the end. Because I knew it was going to be the last time we ever said it. Three, this game loves making me scream Okita, so I might as well give it one last go. But, oh. Ah. <laughs> ah, okay. Alright. Game, you got me. Oh, you got me, game.
I'm sniffing because I cried for Okita. I think depending on Nagakura's bad ends, I might have to edit my script and list for the top 12 boys. I, I, I might have to, I might have to move things around. By the way, we're on to Nagakura! Um... Mmm, someone mercilessly cutting tons of onions is so, so true. <sighs> okay. Composure is needed. Chapter 1. <clears throat> Low romance and high corruption is your recipe. Now we are back to the skip button. <laughs> Go with the skip bud. I'm recovering. <laughs> I'm still recovering. There weren't many ways to comfort him, so I said, Was lying really the best option? Was lying really the best option? If you had just told them the truth, then surely everyone would have understood that none of this was your fault, Nagakura. His eyes thinned melancholically, and he feigned a half-hearted smile as he responded. But words failed to form in my mouth as I watched Nagakura slump in frustration, speaking like he was fighting to convince himself once more than me. Make him endure it. Nagakura, are you in pain? He shook his head profusely, stubborn as ever to deny any sort of help. But his claims were as thin as smoke, and he fell to his knees shortly after, crumpling in quick fashion. There was nothing I could do except for watching the Gokura writhe helplessly on the floor, tangling into his own limbs. Nagakura, please, hang in there! Through shallow, staggered breaths, Nagakura forced a nod, pinching his own flesh in pain. Normally, Nagakura was the image of strength. Seeing him grimace in this vulnerable state was heart-wrenching. What he was experiencing was unfathomable to me. If only I could be there, lying in his place. My chest tightened as I continued gazing at him from off to the side, feeling like a hopeless passenger. After an eternity of waiting, Nagakura finally overcame his fury-induced symptoms. For any normal individual, 
the episode would have been utterly exhausting, yet Nagakura picked himself up and prepared to leave for his guard's duties, guard duties. Had Nagakura planned on enduring the rest of his life in this brutal way? An inexplicable anxiety was sitting uncomfortably in my heart, building with each passing moment. No, no, I do not, I swear to God, I do not hear thunder outside. Nope, uh-uh, nope, I do not, no way, not me. Didn't hear <gasps> Beefcake! Anyway. <laughs> My first reaction to Nagakura's uniform was, uh, isn't it a little tight? It's a little tight on you, isn't it? We're getting this shot now. <laughs> it was a bit of an understatement seeing how snugly they clung to his body. Perhaps Nogakura was more excited about his uniform than I had originally expected. The Shinsugumi were hastily gathering all of their preparation days ahead of the departure for Kofu. All right, where are we stopping? Kuza get in, Jenny. Can I go to go away at the night to walk around it? Okay, oh, sing up. Not a photo. Can you know what you need to know? With his powers activated, Nagakura swung his katana faster than I had ever seen, and the wind cutting behind it made my bangs fly up. However, however, father had a backup plan. Father withdrew a handful of scalpels seemingly out of nowhere and spread his feet slightly. Suddenly, something resembling sharp pointed horns began to protrude from his forehead. In a flash, Father flung the handful of scalpels towards Nogokura like kunai knives. <laughs> A few of them grazed against Nagakura's body, but such small scratches meant nothing to a fury. As Nagakura went to lift his sword, however, his movements were suddenly dulled, and he looked puzzled when he stopped moving altogether. Oh, so it's not exclusive to Yamazaki's route. Oh, you know what? Okay, that's a clever way to put it. With that, Father proceeded to pull more scalpels from out of his kimono slyly. Slyly. Nagakura, run! No sooner had my warning left my mouth when Father's scalpel flew speedily past my face. Oh, I'll do that again. No sooner had my warning left my mouth when father's scalpels flew speedily past my face. Tattered by a flurry of scalpels, Nagakura dropped lifelessly to the floor, and father stepped menacingly towards me. Father, I... Father extended his arm out towards me, slipping his over my... slipping his over my eyes to cover my vision. My consciousness cut out. 
Suddenly, everything went black. Nope, absolutely. Do not hear any thunder whatsoever. Nope, uh, no. <laughs> well, that was an ending, and the silver came back for it. That's interesting. Uh, Tanagakura. Chapter 2. Hmm. Low romance and high corruption is your recipe. That's a plane. That's not thunder. Okay. Be nice, plane. Calling out to him was an impulsive move, illustrated by how quickly my mind went blank afterwards, so I thought I would talk about Kondo-san. In my mind, Nagakura seemed most incensed about Kondo-san not having demonstrated proper leadership during such a tenuous time for the Shinsengumi. Perhaps if I approached him about it gently, I could give him a formula to ease his troubled thoughts. Kondo-san is late, huh? I guess since, uh, since it was his hometown, he was talking to all his old friends, and time must have slipped away from him. Besides, knowing Kondo-san, it's probably not easy saying no to any of those people either. I didn't have the faintest idea of how to follow up the conversation, but thankfully Nagakura chimed in shortly afterwards. Ah, so だから新参の大使だけじゃなくていろいろ話をしなきゃいけねえのも当然のことなんだよな。元さんの家族にも説明しなきゃならねえしよ。おお、that's also a good point. I don't see it like that. The cheeks of Nagakura's face became a little rosy as he turned his smile in my direction. Oh, please, don't worry. It seemed that I could still get through to Nagakura, which was a huge relief for me. In this moment, my heart lightened just a little. Watching Nagakura smile so effortlessly was enough to melt away whatever worries started to poke their heads into our mist. さて、ジジロちゃんはみんなのところに戻って少しは寝ろよ。俺はもう少しここで頭を冷やしていくからさ。うん。Just make sure to return as soon as you can, okay? Right. Just get forward. We make him endure it. Nagakura, are you okay? Nagakura crumpled to his knees, grinding his teeth together through staggered breaths. Even as Nagakura cried out in desperate pain, he dug his fingernails into his flesh and endured it proudly. Nagakura, hang in there! As Nagakura became consumed by bloodlust, he held on for dear life, using every ounce of willpower in his body to withstand his insatiable cravings. Insatiable cravings. I think we may just do this, uh, game over and come back later so that this storm doesn't do things. It doesn't interrupt the recording and the stream. 
I will come back at eight, I guess, if I have to. Yeah, we may, there may be help. I don't know. There may be SSL. There may not be SSL. Anyway, pfft, fuck. Kondo-san led our hectic retreat from Kofu with myself and what remained of his men in tow, hoping to find ourselves safely out of the Imperial Army's reach. We felt hopeless, trapped by our potent fear. Men dropped the weapons from their hands, hurling one leg in front of the other in desperation. It was Topo Fushimi all over again. The color drained from Kondo's face as he watched his men straggle along the gravely ridge in, the gravely ridge in chaos. We sprinted aimlessly, the cackle and howl of cannon fire roaring ominously in the background. Would Nakakura and the others really be okay? I couldn't help but stop and turn to look back, worrying for the fate of the friends we left behind. At Toba Fushimi, we lost our friend Inoue. I couldn't bear the thought of losing another friend. Can I skip? Guilt festered inside of me, and I turned around once more. However, a surprise visitor came to greet me. It was Father, who was accompanied by a platoon of soldiers in Western uniforms. Father, what are you doing here? I attempted to reach for my Kodachi, but someone appeared behind me, stopping me from grabbing it. What the? As my head turned ar slowly around, I saw dozens of men dressed in similar attire. That all too familiar dread crept up my neck, as scarlet eyes glared back at me. I suddenly realized my opportunity to escape had vanished. I will never make it back to Edo now. Okay, I'm sure the mic picked that one up. So, I will come back later tonight. If so, I, it, as, as long as the power isn't out and it remains a clear sky, as it says it will, um, we'll be back tonight at 8 p.m. for the rest of this stream that was scheduled because Mother Nature decided I'm not going to have this. <laughs> so, in order to not piss off Mother Nature, I shall go off stream. But then tomorrow at 3 p.m. EST, we'll come back and we're going to start Kyoto Wins Bad Endings. Because that's all that's left. I promise you. We're going to suffer, probably. But yeah, tonight we're going to finish up Nagakura and Kazuma and find that word that's lost in Kazuma's fruit. And tomorrow, Kyoto Wins. Please, drink water. Have a good day or night. Don't die because you didn't drink water, and I'll see you tonight. Bye-bye.